Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Foxhole. Uh, we have another special episode today. I'm joined by my co-host, Julia Ferris. For her first Foxhole episode, Julia has been helping me run the business since day one as our director of business operations, but also as our coffee buyer in Rwanda. Welcome, Julia. Um, we also have two very special guests from Rwanda, from Sidorman in Rwanda, John Bosco Siminega and Muhizi Longin. Uh, welcome to the show, both of you. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Aleko. We are happy to be here with you tonight, this evening. Excellent. Uh, Thank you, Aleko. You're welcome, Longin. I'm very happy to see you both. It's been far too long. Um, both of these fine gentlemen here are, are representatives of C. Dorman, uh, which includes under their umbrella, the Kanzu washing station, which is the one and only coffee that Red Fox procures from Rwanda. Uh, one of my all time favorite coffees. And I think interestingly enough, a coffee that we talk about internally at Red Fox is possibly our most popular coffee at all. Most of our clients top to bottom are buying Kanzu in some capacity because it really is a jewel of Nyamasheke. Uh, Nyamasheke is the growing region where the coffee is from, perched kind of on like south, south central uh, Lake Kivu, high up in the mountains around 2000 meters, just like really green, lush, forested, beautiful mountainside. Um, Kanzu itself was built in the mid aughts by Alphonse Kaijuka who eventually sold the, the coffee washing station to C. Dorman. Uh, I personally have been involved with Kanzu since 2007, when the Cup of Excellence did a precursor event to the first formal Cup of Excellence in Rwanda called the Golden Cup, uh, where Kanzu took third place, where I at the time at Stumptown split that lot with Jeff Watts and Intelligentsia Coffee, and really just fell in love with the profile and started to buy that coffee repeatedly year uh, after year from there. Um, so I'd like to turn this over to Julia. We'll get started with the interview uh, and hear from these two guys, enough from me. Great, thanks Aleko. Um, I think let's start, Jean Bosco, if you um, would introduce yourself and then start by telling us a little bit about your coffee career. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, uh, Julia. Um, so my name is Jean Bosco Seminega. Uh, I'm the country manager for Sidom and Rwanda. But, and uh, I joined Sidom and Rwanda in 2015, but I have been in the coffee for a while. Maybe the, for the last 20 years, I have been in the coffee business and I started as a consultant, later on as a coffee business uh, owner and then later on I joined uh, Sidorman since 2015 as, as a country manager. So for the last 20 years I have been in, in the coffee industry in Rwanda. Thank you Jean Bosco. Um, Longine, will you tell us, introduce yourself and tell us about your career in coffee? Thank you Julia. Uh, my name is Longine Muhizi. So I'm a London citizen and I have 13 years experience in coffee career here in Rwanda. So I started my coffee career in 2007 uh, in a USAID project called Spread. So it was a project that uh, we are helping uh, cooperative to, uh, to initiating cooperative, developing uh, uh, co co cooperative and help them to get finance and link the cooperative with, uh, with uh, overseas buyers. And uh, from spread, so I joined the Ruashosko. It was also a number of, uh, and, um, of cooperatives. So where I worked as a quality controller and a cooperative uh, development officer. And uh, 2010, I, I joined the TechnoSav. Uh, Technoserve was uh, uh, was a project that uh, funded by with the uh, Bill and the Melinda Gate Foundation, with the aim to to provide solution for Euro poverty. 
And uh, from TechnoSurf, I joined the CEDAW in 2012 and in the capacity of operation manager and logistic. So since 2012, uh, I'm still currently working with CEDAW Mandwanda. So that is a bit of my uh, experience in the coffee. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Great history, Longjean. And that's where I met you back in the day working for for the spread project. Um, really uh, amazing project for any of the listeners who aren't fully aware of the spread project. There was actually a project prior to spread called Pearl, which morphed into spread after different uh, financing came in through USAID. That was a recovery project for the coffee sector post genocide and really, really boosted the ability for special specialty coffee to be differentiated in the international marketplace. Value of coffee for any individual coffees farmer has risen exponentially since the advent of that project. So really special, really special thing. Um, that was uh, actually uh, earlier 2000 when the project started. And we had actually two projects that time. There's another project which was supporting private uh, companies called ADR. Um, actually, I was a consultant in the same project for four years. And uh, I remember we met the Aleppo in 2010, I think. We, I, I, I worked with the council for some time. I don't know if you remember. Of course, of course, of course. I remember, yeah, you were working with Alphonse directly. <laughs> yeah, I, I told you some coffees from, from Kanzu. Yeah, from Kanzu and also from, from Goma, no? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. Time is speeding up, you know, since that time. Yeah. The- now we're now we're veterans in the coffee industry. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> in a few years I'll start thinking about retiring. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. I'm not I can't even fathom yet, but maybe maybe not. I had someone never retired from coffee. You know, it's very hard to leave the coffee industry. I will say I have seen people try to leave before and they always come back. It holds you, <laughs> puts the talons into you and doesn't let you go. Yeah, we end up meeting somewhere back in Tokyo. Yeah, always. Mm-hmm. Next, John Bosco, can you tell us a little more about um, uh, C. Dorman's history in Rwanda and when Dorman fought Kanzu and what other washing stations um, Dormans is operating now in the country. Uh, thanks, Julia. Um, so, Sidorman Rwanda started the operations in Rwanda since 2012. And uh, we started leasing uh, washing stations, four washing stations of the Western province. And uh, Five actually, one in uh, the four were in Yamasheke, uh, one in Karongi, and uh, one in the south uh, near Kigali, in, in, in one district called Kamoni. Uh, we were leasing at that time, and from 2013 14, we started uh, buying some of those washing stations we have been leasing. So uh, our operations were concentrated in the Western province, mainly in one district called Nyamasheke, uh, where really uh, we can say the best coffee from Rwanda is, is coming from, and, and that's where it's located council as well. So uh, since uh, 2015, we, keep, uh, we kept buying some washing stations, and now we are uh, owning uh, um, nine washing stations. And uh, seven of them are, are in uh, Western province. Uh, in Yamasheke, we have uh, five and two in the uh, Rusiz district, which are still in uh, Western province. And the two more, one is in the south in, in Kamonyi and the one in the east in a uh, district called Gatsibo. Uh, so, uh, 
we are having now nine, we own wash, nine washing stations, but we also sometimes uh, work with some small SMEs uh, owning washing stations. Like now, we are, last year, we worked with uh, uh, three washing stations uh, owned by small uh, uh, local companies where we prefinance and then we do marketing of that coffee. So we have now around 6,000 uh, uh, farmers registered that are linked to those different washing stations and uh, where we provide some services from farming to uh, training, uh, support uh, certification process and so on and so forth. And maybe Longine, you could you tell us a little about what makes Niamasheke a special growing region for coffee and, and a little bit about Kanzu specifically, the area. Yeah, thank you, Julia. Uh, maybe uh, before uh, talking about Niamasheke, just I would also want to, 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 to say that as Doma and Rwanda, uh, we have chosen just to, to, to be present in Niamasheke because of the, the quality of coffee uh, that, from that particular area. So Nyamasheke uh, region, the Nyamasheke is, is actually a district. It's called Nyamasheke. It is uh, located in Western uh, uh, province of Rwanda near the Kivu. Uh, it is bordering uh, Congo in the West. And uh, uh, it has a, a range of altitude from, uh, the altitude ranges from uh, 1450 to 2200 and above because when you, it, it has also the natural forest called Nyungwe. And uh, the rainfall in that uh, particular area is ranging, uh, ranging between uh, 1300 to 1400 millimeters per year. And uh, those, uh, the soil also is uh, volcanic and those three elements are conducive for, for quality of coffee. So that also was the, the most uh, uh, basic element that pushed the doorman also to, to, to own washing station in the Yamasheke area. So going to Kanzu, Kanzu uh, as a coffee washing station, uh, the area, the country manager mentioned that we, we as Doman, we started uh, operating in Kanzu in 20, uh, 2012, and uh, also uh, in 2013, uh, to the time we, we owned, we bought the washing station. Uh, Kanzu, uh, it, it's located at uh, uh, 1,836 meters above sea level. And uh, uh, basing on where it's located, it is down here, it is sounded with very uh, nice uh, hills, uh, covered with coffee. And uh, the agricultural practice there, it is, it is uh, highly visible. And uh, yearly, Kanzu is able to produce uh, uh, four to six containers for exportable grade, high quality. And uh, uh, because of the, the quality produced in that particular region where Kanzu is located, we always face with a competition from our competitors, name, uh, namely uh, Likely, Rwakov, uh, Working with Scafina, uh, Westlock, here called Rwanda Trading Company, because they, they have a uh, washing station surrounding Kanzu. Uh, but also uh, depend on, on how the uh, Sidoma and Rwanda is aiming at, uh, 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 at building relationship with farmers. So we still really uh, have that strong partnership, which make uh, Kanzu uh, the best washing station to work with. So uh, to date, Kanzu has, is working with uh, 500, 35 farmers, and those farmers are registered under certification program. So we implement uh, different standards at Kanzu, uh, like uh, Rainforest Alliance, uh, Oats, and Cafe Practices. 
So uh, if maybe I go uh, recently, Kanzu uh, for the previous season were able to produce uh, four, four, four boxes of, of exportable uh, grade. And uh, and because of the competition, the price was very, uh, very high because uh, uh, looking at other regions in Rwanda, it is only in the region where Kansu is located where the, the, cherry, the, the cherry price was very high uh, the, in the previous season. So I think uh, that is a bit uh, information about Kanzu. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. great information. Thank you, Longjin. Um, I'm very curious about how the competition there and how it works. I'm sure it's a battle for the coffee as it is every year. Uh, that is, it's a, such a special area. How, how did the harvest, so you told us a little bit about how the how harvest shook out in terms of competition and volume. How did you see it quality wise compared to years past? Either one of you, whoever wants to answer. Kanzu uh, is a special quality all the time. So um, we have been, uh, of course, getting competition for this matter because Kanzu is known as, as one of the special quality. And you know, uh, uh, Dorman in Rwanda is focusing on, on quality since the, the since 2015, I think. So, you know, uh, we, we, start, we decided to focus on, on high quality coffee and Kanzu is uh, one of the best origin of high quality coffee so uh, as of course because the competition is there because people they know uh, this is a very high quality coffee and so one of the elements for the competition is just putting the price high so we have been paying uh, the higher price for our, our farmers in the council area because we know the quality is good and we thank you for you know for the price you have been paying to us to help to manage, uh, pay a good price to our farmers in council. And, the, and, and then we keep tracking the, uh, the, the small lots of coffee for controlling the quality, because uh, we know uh, when we focus on quality, we need to really on daily basis uh, tracking the, the coffee we are getting and we keep capping on a regular basis once coffee is drying, we keep bringing the small uh, bunch of samples and we, we track the, the best lot we can for our best clients, like Red Fox. Thank you. Uh, I have to say, I regret not buying more coffee this year. The coffee was so good. We were, as buyers, maybe you've seen this from other buyers as well, a little timid with the situation, unsure of how how things would shake out economically here in North America with our own clients and how they would be, be living through this situation. Uh, but we should have bought, uh, we should have bought another container. Next year we'll be back, back strong with the full volumes again. Um, how, when do you see the next harvest starting and how do you think that will shake out in terms of volume and quality? Uh, the next season, probably in Kanzu, uh, because of the higher altitude, we start a bit uh, late compared to others. Uh, but still, uh, around uh, end of Feb, we start early March. We start uh, in Kanzu, and uh, this year we end up to July still getting cherries in in, in Kanzu. Wow! Which is good. Actually, the last uh, cherries from higher altitudes. Uh, the maturity of cherries came in a bit late, and the, which is good because the the, the crop get uh, time for concentration, of, and, and then the quality is, is, is coming much much better than than the early uh, harvest. So uh, we are starting early March, and we expect good crop because this it is uh, already the rain is uh, is a. Uh, the start of the raining is, is good now. We applied fertilizer already. So we are expecting at least the same volume or more uh, like what we bought uh, in 220. So four or five boxes from council, we can be a bit confident to get that coffee. So uh, your two boxes are, 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 are short and you are the, you know, you are, you are, you are, you are first choice. So be sure you will get the quantity you want. 
you. Yeah, that, that's the mantra for us is to make quick decisions and to move quickly. Be a strong exactly. partner. I, 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 I decision will help us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I wanted to say on quality, I mean, we cupped everything this year in Berkeley, no one was traveling. And it, it, I mean, it's always such a pleasure to cup those kanzu offers. They're so good. And this year, you know, it was, they were just the highlight of cupping for me personally. I haven't been cupping as much because I'm at home um, a lot. So there, it's just such a beautiful coffee. And this year was definitely no exception. So beautiful. I, I have one question I want to ask you, jump in real quick. It seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong or, or please update us on the situation. It seems like uh, the potato issue obviously still exists, but it's better controlled than it used to be a while ago. Uh, thinking about the kanzu coffees and the amount of times we've cupped them this year of, across the different lots that we're buying, we have very low incidence of finding potato cup. Is there a special program or a special way that you approach the quality control of that now at Dorman? Uh, I think it's much, much more uh, internal, uh, more uh, strict control of, of, the, of, the, of the small lots we are tracking because we, 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 we cap every small bunch of coffee on a regular basis and, and whatever we get from, you know, uh, we, we get any, any potato test, we keep it aside, we recap until we get uh, any lot uh, potato free test. But, you know, uh, and then we do uh, a lot of uh, hand picking and we have uh, very good cappers at our office. We have two uh, uh, Q graders now and uh, we work hard really on, on getting the best uh, quality we, we can, especially for uh, regular buyers and committed buyers so but potato test is still there we can't say a hundred percent you know it's very hard to control this potato test and you can cap one 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 bunch of coffee when you come back you get it but we we try to track as as, as much as we can to, to get the, the, the potato free uh, loads i think you've done a very good job thank you for that i would like to add something Yeah. Uh, also, uh, going back to the uh, farm's practices, a lot has been done. Uh, we have a, a program uh, designed to farmers. We deliver training to farmers on good agricultural practices. And uh, with those practices, if you go uh, through uh, or around the washing station through the farms, you see there is really uh, uh, in, uh, an improvement on how uh, farmers are, uh, are treating their coffee plot. And also that uh, uh, also had an impact to reduce the potato, uh, the, the, the potato tent. And uh, uh, among the, the practices we are teaching farmers to, to, to practice in their farms, uh, there is also pruning because you know pruning is really very important because those uh, antestia uh, which is which are likely to be the root cause of potatoes uh, they really like to hide in in, in a coffee farms when it is bushy but when you clear the farm and also you also you you practice the other uh, the other uh, the other uh, practices like uh, 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 like uh, applying fertilizer, so applying some pesticides when, 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 when possible, and uh, also uh, pruning, so that potato really, uh, the, the, the severity of the potato is really reduced. And also going to the, uh, to the washing station, also we do a lot of controls when coffee cherries arrive at the washing station, uh, we do sort of sorting of the cherries, and then also uh, to be sure that uh, anything that has been uh, picked by any insect is removed, we do of rotation because when some when, when uh, you put coffee uh, or, uh, in water, those one which has uh, picked by insect, they are floating, and then you remove them. 
So uh, then again, also uh, after coffee is, is parked, we also uh, do uh, 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 sorting during the, the pre-drying area. Uh, actually, they call it skin drying. So while also uh, drying the skin of coffee, because after parping and the fermentation, the coffee is, uh, is wet. So you do uh, skin drying just to dry the skin so that when you, you put the coffee under natural sun, it cannot be cracked by the sun. So during that process, because the coffee is, is wet, you can also easily uh, pick any defective uh, coffee beans. So that is also just to highlight that also during the, from the, the farming practices, also to the coffee washing station practices, best practices, we also do a lot of controls to be sure that the, the, the coffee we are going to produce is, is, the, is, the, is of quality desired by, by uh, clients. That's great. It's very thorough quality control practices. It's great to hear about all the steps you're taking. Thank you. And to give uh, a, a very brief synopsis uh, or an update on what potato is, to any non industry <laughs> listeners. Um, potato is, is a term for a, a defect where a specific kind of uh, insect bores into the beans, creating, leaving some bacteria that leaves a flavor in the coffee that tastes exactly like raw potato. Some people say it's kind of like raw asparagus, really, really interesting, uh, un unfortunately undesirable, but folks like Jean Bosco and Longin have taken great measures to try to eliminate it as much as possible. Um, yeah, a little note on that. Okay, well, I think um, maybe we can move and this question could be for, for both of you, just if you could tell us a little about what the year has been like in Rwanda, what the impacts of COVID-19 have been both on the sort of operations for, for doormen and also just on a human level and for farmers, um, what, what that's been like this year for you. Thanks, Julia. Um, 2020 has been a very hard year for everyone worldwide. So uh, Rwanda was not uh, an exception. So uh, we had our first positive uh, case in the Feb exactly on 14th of Feb. So from that time, uh, positive uh, cases kept increasing and uh, Rwanda took measures, serious measures from early uh, March. We went through lockdown completely. And by the time uh, we started uh, harvesting, that was during really the hard time where we were, the whole country were on lockdown. But uh, farmers, agriculture especially, uh, was uh, allowed, people in farming were allowed to continue farming. But with the real um, uh, movement, and that time was very hard for us to keep the supervision of, of work at, on, on field. So from Kigali to, get, to go out of Kigali, we need a special uh, uh, authorization to move out of Kigali. And, and fortunately we have uh, uh, supervision at, at the regional level of, of our washing station. So we have our washing station managers, but who, who are living at really, at the washing station during the harvesting time. So we were lucky because they were there and we have uh, someone supervising who is based also in the Western province. So uh, we were lucky he was able to continue the movement there. Otherwise, uh, we, we managed to go there ourselves, me and Longin during uh, the harvesting time but it was not easy to move out of Kigali, but we get uh, an authorization, special authorization as people working in, in, in agriculture to get out on, on field and keep. Uh... So otherwise uh, Rwanda took uh, serious measures. Uh, so, you know, uh, now it's uh, mandatory to wear a mask everywhere. Anyone in Rwanda is uh, getting out of his home, he need to wear a mask. Um, uh, social distancing, it's a control. 
and the testing. So we, uh, Rwanda, they started testing since March because we were not prepared because of, you know, it was something, you know, surprising to everyone. But uh, by the time slowly uh, Rwanda uh, gets uh, equipment to do testing, now we have um, uh, 5,500 uh, positive cases uh, tested since that time. And, uh, but nine, more than 90% are already covered, fortunately. And we have uh, uh, around 50, 50 uh, cases uh, death. So, uh, um, but still now uh, from June, uh, the country started reopening slowly. Now we are, uh, uh, schools are back now because even all, all schools were closed, but now they are reopened in this uh, last, this, this week is when the last uh, lower classes started. And uh, the country slowly is, is recovering, but we are still uh, uh, under serious control because they keep testing, they, we, we need to keep social distancing. Some pub, pubs are still closed. So uh, or hotels are opening and any, any uh, travelers need to get tested. And whoever gets in Rwanda need to be quarantined for, for 24 hours and, and is tested. So uh, Rwanda took serious measures and, and we are lucky now we can say the, the, it's a bit under control when you compare with the other countries. So uh, consequences of COVID, of course, uh, during the, the farming time, because of the movement, you, you, you see uh, the risk was a bit high for us to keep uh, uh, financing, sending money on the field when you can't go there on a regular basis. But we, we managed anyway, we were lucky to have a good team and, and, and we managed to get production, we managed to pay farmers, and it, it was finally it went well. So uh, the impact, some negative impact, of course, for the cost of life, you know, uh, it is now becoming very high because of, you know, Rwanda is a uh, account which is importing a lot of things. In, including uh, food stuff. So uh, the cost of importation or, or imports pay pr prices are very, very high uh, because of uh, the transport issues at the borders and, and, and everything is, is really not easy. So uh, there's a very negative impact on, on, on everyone, including our, our farmers. Their cost of life is going up and the, buying uh, any stuff they want to buy, prices are high, to education and everything. Now it's not easy, but we have to deal with anyway. Thank you, John Bosco. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting to hear. I mean, we're in the US right now having a really um, big surge of cases and um, it's been a hard year, year here too. And I'm glad that the measures in Rwanda have been successful at controlling COVID. I'm glad to hear that. And yeah, schools are back. Are you able to travel to the field now? Are you still under the need to get special authorization or is that part um, more back to normal in terms of traveling? Now we, we can travel on field. You know, uh, the Western province, because it was uh, at, at the border of, of DRC, it was uh, uh, under lockdown longer period than the rest of the country, but uh, now it's reopened. So we can travel um, within the country without any, any, any problem for the moment. So uh, it's only people going out of the country who, are, uh, who, who need to be tested first and then when come back, they need to be tested as well. And how do you see um, looking forward into the upcoming season? Um, what are the, the plans in place for, for next year for, for coping with any more COVID related obstacles or um, anything else? 
Yeah, uh, of course we are we are having hope if, if the the vaccine is discovered and, and I had it is starting tested somewhere some countries and and uh, for sure in Rwanda Rwanda would be included in probably the the first countries to get the vaccine probably because of the you know it was seriously really uh, taken here in Rwanda because. Uh, we, we are uh, a country where we count more on, 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 on tourism, for example, and you know, visitors from outside, it's, it's a service-based economy. So um, that's why Rwanda, it's, it's, this uh, problem was really taken seriously from the, the beginning. So now we are having hope because worldwide, if, if really this pandemic is under control, probably uh, uh, with the vaccination. So we, we hope that things will be much better in the next year than, than this year. Uh, on, on, on farming level, uh, of course, like this year we are, we, we already we have applied fertilizer, but it was not enough because we used to have a fertilizer, which is, uh, uh, purchased from export uh, contributions, and 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 the government was uh, giving some additional support. But now the government uh, didn't manage to get uh, the support we have been getting for buying more fertilizer. So uh, probably uh, we, already we don't have enough, <laughs> and this this year will be uh, already reduced to what we have. But whatever we had uh, was already applied on time. The rainfall is good. So uh, we hope uh, that the production would be good. And only farmers probably they are in hard condition because of, you know, the life in general is becoming a bit hard. But we are, we are trying to, as we are in touch with the farmers, we are trying to work with them. Some of them are, coming looking for some small loan to be paid on, on their production. So we look into their, you know, their background, their historical supply, and then we try to manage, uh, help them to access to some uh, finance to pay their uh, family expenses. So uh, the only one problem up to now is not yet solved is the training because of the gathering a big number of people, uh, keeping the social distancing is a bit a challenge, but we hope that uh, we will try to do the training as we can in respect of, of the COVID measures. It's a great update. <clears throat> yeah. And also to, to add on that, So we are seeking to, to, to increase the involvement of women in, uh, in uh, coffee farming. So we are, we are planning, when just things comes to normal, so we are planning to, to create four groups of women in Kanzu. So we, are, we will be able to train them on different topics uh, aside from uh, coffee practices. Uh, so we are planning to train those groups uh, in term, uh, on the topics of uh, confidence building and the leadership, uh, on the, uh, the topic like uh, 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 basic business skills and, uh, and uh, also uh, uh, financial literacy so that uh, also the off season they can be able to to to, play, to 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 have some activities that can generate income to support the household. So we also after the trainings, just we help them to develop the business ideas, uh, whereby the whereby the four the, the, the four top the four, four best ideas we be able we don't mind, we'll be able to fund the, the best ideas so that they can be the ideas to the to the other uh, Women surrounding uh, the Kanzo region, so so that, that is something also we have in plan, and uh, also we we will also maintain certification 
because also uh, maintaining certification is good for farmers as also we 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 are able to to give them back the social premium and also uh, we are planning to also to contribute in production by by raising seedlings coffee seedlings which will be given to farmers uh, for free so we are having a plan to to distribute in 2021 40,000 uh, new seedlings. So that will really uh, also help us to assure that the, in three, four years to come, to, to assure the, the, the productivity of coffee, which also will continue uh, to, to supply to, to the market. That is also an, uh, an assurance to red folks that the, 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 any, 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 any volume they will have in the future as the company is growing, we will we'll be able to supply the the, the 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 volume the volume the red foods can can uh, can uh, be able to purchase from us that's great news which which varieties are you giving them as seedlings so now now on there is a new released variety uh, called the uh, rap c15 so it it was uh, it was tested by rwanda culture board and it was released uh, in 2015 and uh, that variety uh, is resistant to coffee bear disease and also the, the coffee quality is good uh, as well as also productivity so that is now the new uh, the new variety we are we are we are we are planning to raise in, in nurseries uh, to, to to be developed uh, in, uh, in early next year okay okay thank you Welcome. I don't have any more questions. Do you have any other questions, Aleko? I don't. I think this was really great. Thank you both. Yeah, it's such a pleasure to see you and to hear how the year has gone for you. We so appreciate working with you and all the work that you do. Um, we love that coffee from Kanzu and, and the work that Dormis does. So thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, yeah. really thank you both. It's great to see both of you, two of my oldest friends in Rwanda. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Areko. Thank you, Areko. Yeah. It was a pleasure really meeting you guys here. Yeah, of course, it's been a long time we don't see each other, but uh, since a long time we have been in touch with, uh, on, on Kanzu, and uh, we hope you guys will continue buying Kanzu, and uh, it will be uh, really a pleasure to be with you. Great. Great, of course, we'll always be there. As long as Kanzu is producing coffee, we'll be there. Really, thank you to everyone at Dormans. And Julia, thank you for hosting this one. This was great. We we'll have to do this again. <laughs> great to be here. Thanks, Aleka. Yeah. Okay, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Talk soon. Thank you. Bye. bye.